Watch the full video, please. What's up everybody, 360 Juice here, back with another video for you guys. And today I'm gonna be reacting to a super cool video that caught my attention. Scrolling through my DMs, one of my supporters told me to react to somebody named Johnny Harris. Shampoo is a lot. So I looked up the title, and it was like number 27 on trending or something like that. And I watched the first minute or so, and it caught my interest. Like, I'm really interested, because I tell you guys all the time about shampoo. Don't use shampoo more than two times a week, because shampoo is bad for your scalp. It, it takes out your, your natural oils. And you know, strip strips you from it. It's a bad thing for you. So try to stay away from shampoo as much as possible. It would be dope to not be able to use shampoo and take out all the products in my hair without shampoo. If I could find a way to do that, then I would never use shampoo again because I really don't like shampoo. If I could clean my hair with conditioner, like deep conditioner, if I could clean my hair like that, I would. Or maybe I'm just not as knowledgeable as I think about shampoo. So I might just have to do more research on what types of shampoos there's there is out there. So I could give to you guys, which I'm slacking on. I should have been did that. But yeah, we're gonna watch this video by Johnny Harris. You know, I'm, I'm gonna learn too, cause it's a lot of things I don't know about shampoo. So if I have anything to say about it, or if I agree with them, I'm gonna pause the video and tell you guys. But yeah, this should be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. And I hope you are too, because we're gonna learn a lot from this video. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay guys, so this is the video right here. Um, it was uploaded yesterday and it's the title is Shampoo is a lie for me. Dot 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 and maybe for you too. That's where it caught my attention. You know, and it was number 20, 27 yesterday. It was number 27 on trending. Now it's number 23. And Johnny Harris has 1.25 million subscribers, okay? So that terrifies me um, for one reason and one reason only. I'm going to react to a professional, I'm not even going to say professional, a big YouTuber, right? I actually texted or DM Johnny yesterday asking for permission, for permission to react to this video because of such a huge platform that he has. Because I don't, I don't like getting copyrighted, alright? The only time I react to videos now is if you guys tag 360 Juice in your title and description, alright? So now I know that you guys give me permission. When it comes to videos like this, you know, the, the girl that got glue in her hair got copyrighted for that. You know, it was just like, it's, I don't like copyright. But, Johnny Harris, please, man, if you see this video, this is for educational purposes. I'm using your video because I don't know this stuff, you feel me? It's my first time watching this video. Blonde reaction for me and my subscribers. And if I if I have anything to teach my subscribers after watching this video, it will be really great. All right, so that's my reason for watching your video, and I'm gonna add my two cents to it. I'm not just you know taking content and just you know making it mine. All right, so if you see this, Johnny, don't you know don't copyright me. I am gonna check out Johnny's page. You feel me? His his channel, and it looks like he's pretty big man again a lot of views in every video and he's not just about one niche how you say niche 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 well one of those he's not about one this is about shampoo hair this is about nft this is about mcdonald's i see three well about three different topics here and that's really cool because me my page is about straight hair and if i switch to another title another topic i get zero views all right, or less views than normal. But he's doing money stuff over here. Then he switches to hair stuff, and he still gets the same amount of views. And that's really dope. So that, I don't know, I'm really interested in that. So I'm going to just leave a subscribe, you feel me? Subscribe to Johnny. And yeah, let's turn on post notification. And let's go back to the video. Okay, so Johnny hasn't watched his hair in five years. That really caught my attention. You haven't watched your hair in five years, bro. What? How you do that? I want to do that. But then again, I get I have products in my hair, so how do I not wash my hair for five years? That's my first thought. That's why I really wanted to watch this video. Five years not washing hair with shampoo? How do you wash your hair, Johnny? That's that's my biggest question. I think that's your question too, watching this video. So let's make this full screen and jump right into it, man. Okay, okay, okay. This is going to piss some people off. Some of you are going to... It's not going to piss me off because, you know, I'm open-minded. Right? I'm open to learn, so let's get it. Your back's on me forever. Sorry to see you go. I have to tell you this reality. I have not 
shampooed my hair for five years. And yet those five years have been some of the best five years of my hair's life. Okay, let's stop it right there. As soon as he said that, I'm like, what? Bro, you crazy. Five years? But then again, that caught my interest. And I wanted to watch more. But then after he said five years, I stopped right there. And I said, you know what? Let me react to this. All right, big shout out to my, one of my supporters that told me about this video because this is very interesting. All right, so let's, let's continue. Itching, no more oily hair, no more dandruff flakes. That's, bro, how? Without shampoo, how does your hair not get oily? How do you get rid of the, the old products? How do you get rid, rid of all this stuff? He said without, he didn't use shampoo and he still didn't get any oily scalp, nothing like that. How is that possible? Just normal hair that does weird stuff sometimes, but is generally happy. Let me explain. Go ahead, take a good look. I know everyone's already doing it anyway. Look at my hair. I never felt so conscious about my hair because I'm talking about it. Okay, so five years ago, I realized that I was in a cycle. The cycle looked like this. Mm -hmm. My head, which produces natural protective oils, would... Yes, your hair does produce natural oils. And when you use shampoo, for, okay, when you put, when your hair produces natural oils, right? And you add other oils in there, sometimes the oils or products or moisturizer conditioners are not natural. So when you do that, it kind of messes with your, with your hair. So that's why I, I would definitely advise you to use natural stuff to your hair, especially coarse and medium hair, all right? But when you add that shampoo to your hair, the shampoo basically strips. It takes all of that natural oil, all of the old dirty products, everything out of your hair, which is which leaves your hair dry and itchy and flakes and everything. And that's why I tell you guys to stay away from shampoo as much as possible. If you can wash your hair once a week, that is good, but maximum twice a week. The shampoo is very bad for you. That's why I tell you guys all the time not to use shampoo. Now let's hear his reasoning to not use shampoo. Washed with shampoo. Shampoo is just a chemical that attaches to these oils on your scalp. And then when you wash that shampoo out, the oils are attached to them and they leave, ridding your head of oils. The shampoo also cleans off any pollen or dust that's caught in your hair. So my hair was now clean, very clean. Oh yeah, and this guy isn't me. This is just a stock footage representation of me five years ago. Anyway, then goes in the conditioner, which coats your hair with- Yes, let's get to the conditioner before he says anything. Conditioner, you have to add that after the shampoo. Sometimes I don't add it because, you know, if I'm getting a haircut the next day, I don't add conditioner. Or if I just want my hair to look super laid and everything, I, I uh, moisturize my hair after I wash. I don't need to, I don't add conditioner sometimes. But the conditioner is supposed to add that moisture back in your hair. Not natural, because all your natural oils that your hair produces on its own is not in your hair no more. You have to wait for that to, you know, produce later. But then the conditioner adds that moisture in your hair to just make your hair uh, not dry. All right, that's it as basically the nutrients that the that the um, shampoo took away as that back in your hair. That's why conditioning is so important. So they say, but let's watch. Silicone material that makes it shine and restores all of that shine that was lost from stripping away all of those oils. Man, I haven't- That right there, I disagree with. The conditioner to me does not add the shine because when I, when I rinse out the shampoo out of my hair and don't add conditioner, my hair tends to be a lot shinier and silkier when I unrag. And if I was, if I, when I add conditioner, my hair slacks when it comes to laying down. And when I unrag, the shine is not there as much as the, the shampoo gives it the shine. So that part right there, I don't think conditioner adds more shine than shampoo to your hair. Well, when you're doing the washing style. When I'm doing the washing style, I don't see more shine when I add conditioner, which is why sometimes I don't like putting conditioner in my hair when I'm doing a video, because when I want to unrag, I want to see great shine, but when I put, add the conditioner in, I don't see that shine that I'm looking for. So sometimes I don't use it, and I don't agree with this, the whole shine thing. Probably said that too much, but let's go. Conditioner in a very long time, but I do remember that it makes your hair feel like silky butter. Mm. Silky butter, is that even a thing? Okay, so you know. strip away the oils, you coat it with this shiny, silky conditioner, and then my hair would end up just being sort of like a fluff ball. In order to style it, I would put in some product, like some fancy pomade I bought at some fancy barber. Yup, I do that too. Chicago. This pomade is made of, wait for it, 
oil. It is oil, an oil-based product. So I'm putting oil back in my hair after I just stripped it all out. Meanwhile, my scalp is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Dude, you just stripped away all this protective oil that we make to protect your scalp. WTF. And so it fires up its natural oil-making machine to produce more oil for your hair. So now you have double oil. You've got the pomade and the natural oils. So now, by the end of the day, you start to feel like your hair is super oily and greasy and... You He does have a point. He does have a point. I mean, I, I thought of that, but I always thought I needed the, the moisturizers and the butters and the, and the pomades in my hair, though. Well, the reason I use pomade is because when I'm going out, I want that extra shine. My natural oils don't give me that shine that the pomade or the moisturizer would. Or adding that extra, you know, olive oil or two six skin wavy hair growth oil or um, um, coconut oil. It doesn't give me that. My 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 natural oils don't give me that shine that I'm looking for. So if I want that quick shine, those products is what I what I use, and that's the reason I use it for. And also, yes, to keep my hair moisturized. But I never thought that the natural oils would take care of all of that. And I, I still I don't think the natural oils of my hair can give me that shine that I'm looking for. Or Give me the perfect. Yeah, I need those those extra products to enhance the way my hair look. So that right there is very is very tough for me. Now right, let's continue. I have all these messages about dirty hair being greasy and oily. Hey, you have a greasy hair, though, bro. Oh come on, man. So what's the cure for this oily, greasy, dirty hair? Shampoo! The deep cleansing shampoo. It helps take away the excess dirt and oils that can be inside your hair. Right, I reckon we should give it a go and get you washed up. Let's do it. And the whole cycle starts over again. In my mid-twenties, I also started to realize that my scalp was starting to become like itchy and flaky, which is like so embarrassing. Okay, this is where I tell you guys I'm not very knowledgeable on this stuff, but I have a lot of dry scalp. Alright, even though I wash my hair, next day, you know, I put I put conditioner, everything. My scalp is still dry two days later. Like, I comb through my hair before my brush session, and it's a lot of dead skin falling off. And I'm like, why? Why? I just washed my hair. I applied conditioner, oil, and everything. I moisturized. Why is my hair still dry? I could never get the answer. So, this is very interesting to me. And let's just continue watching. So uncomfortable. And yet, luckily, out there in the world, there is a cure for this. The problem of flaking dandruff can be solved. With just regular use of Procter & Gamble's new Wonder Shampoo, Head & Shoulders. Okay, that one right there, I don't think shampoo solves that problem. That Because it actually makes your hair dry. If, if the shampoo strips the natural oils from your hair, how can it moisturize your hair? It should be making your hair even more dry. Alright, so that right there is very, like, confusing. Okay, listen. Just a quick moment to make it clear that this cycle is my hair experience, which is based on not only my physiology and genetics, but also on my standards and relationship to society and what society tells me to do with my hair. So just to get this out of the way, I'm not here to preach what's right for your scalp. I'm simply telling you what's right for my scalp. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's this whole movement, sort of a political movement around shampoo and not shampooing. It's called no poo, which is a very unfortunate name yeah. for this movement. I'm not a part of that movement. I'm not pushing that. This isn't political for me. I just want to tell you a story about the journey of my hair using a little bit of history and data and research. And again, most importantly, my own experience of five years of not shampooing my hair. Okay, so let's dive in. Let's okay. get some context here. Human beings used to not wash their hair very much. Exactly. I thought of it. I'm like, before shampoo even existed, how did we get the stuff out of our hair? It was only by the 1970s when ads targeted mainly towards white women would come out saying that you needed to wash your hair every single day and that the dirt in your hair was like weighing it down. There's an attract dirt and weigh your down like this. And that in order to prevent this weighing down and to get body, you would have to use this product. This also started a whole new set of messaging around greasy hair, dirty hair, which even... This is, this is messing my stuff up, man. This is messing up everything I learned and know about shampoo. This is messing up business. This is messing up everything, man. Because now, me, I'm about to dig into this stuff 
And then I might come out not using shampoo ever again. Okay? Because this right here is just like, it's telling me that these people don't care about us. They're really just doing this just because they want the money. It's all just for money. And I'm thinking shampoo is really doing something for us. And if, if there's a chance that we don't have to use shampoo, I'm all for it because I hate using shampoo. I tell you guys all the time, don't use shampoo more than two times a week. And because of what it does see here. And if there's a chance that I don't have to use it no more, I'm going for it. Just know that. In it is like repulsive. So demonizing the idea of greasy hair and pushing this daily shampoo regimen was seen as the only- Definitely not. Don't, don't shampoo your hair daily. You are killing your scalp. Do not do that. All right. I mean, I understand it's probably different for straight hair, but coarse, medium, please don't wash your hair every single day. To fight back against this greasy hair epidemic. Today, Americans wash their hair around five of the seven days of the week. By the way, that's about Not double me. how much they wash their hair on average in Spain and Italy. And it's way more than the once a month Americans used to wash their hair in the 30s. Okay, let's pause right here. My girlfriend, she washes her hair twice a month max. If not twice a month, once a month. And her hair grows and still, you know, still looks healthy. And me, on the other hand, I wash my hair like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably six to eight times a month. And it's like, why do, how, I don't know, man. It's, I don't know. I don't know. Let's keep going. Okay, let me pause right here, guys. Um, real quick, something I want to say before I lose my train of thought. Um, this also tells you, since your, your hair is, is like producing natural oils, you don't have to add con um, add moisturizers or butters or pomades every single day. Just like you don't wash your hair every single day, you could add uh, um, you could moisturize your hair every other day or every other other day because you know your your scalp is producing oil. You don't want to put too much, and then it starts drip. like me. You see that my forehead is all messed up, and that's that's on me because I was wolfing, and when I wolf, I tend to add more products in my hair. And I leave my do-rag on a whole lot. So the oil starts dripping out my forehead. And the, the do-rag being on a lot, it's like not, it's no room to breathe. Which, you know, this this happens. So if I'm not wolfing as often, this is super easy to go away. All I got to do is scrub my face every day, wash it, moisturize it with lotion. And I'm good. It's going to be going in a week. But this is what causes it. When you wear your do-rag all the time, you, you add a lot of moisturizer in your hair. And it's, the oil starts to drip down and it causes pimples and dark spots and everything. So, yeah, just so you know that. I was actually really nervous and conscious of what the barber was going to say to me. And he didn't say anything. So I asked him, I was like, hey, how does my hair and scalp look to you? And he was like, looks good. It's a little dry, but overall pretty healthy. And that was the moment for me. I was like, wait, what? This guy who sees like dozens of scalps every day. Dozens of scalps. That's actually really gross. Like dozens of scalps. I'm just not, I'm never going to say that again. This guy sees a lot of scalps every day and he had like blessed my unshampooed scalp and was like, you're actually okay. Now, let me just remind. Uh, 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 uh. Hold up. Before I get a haircut, I always wash my hair with shampoo just so I could take away the, the old products and, and, and the dirt out of my hair. I don't know, guys. I'm, I'm confused uh, about life. Help me. I've told some of my close friends this story before, and they have tried it, and it hasn't worked for them. I'm not saying that this exact thing is going to work for you. The reason I am making this video, because I want us to have reasons to be skeptical of all the messages that we get fed around this topic. Nourishing damaged hair back to healthy life. Regular washing is the only way that you can get rid of that excess oil. I feel no grease. A few years ago, I read this kind of obnoxious business book that said that the best way to market a product is to create a psychological trigger that makes people need your product. The example used in the book was this toothpaste in like the 50s or 60s where the ad for this toothpaste called attention to this quote dangerous coating that robs the teeth of their whiteness like this oh another thing i want to add to this while i'm thinking about it right now is i hear that toothpaste is freaking bad for you 
on the, on the back of the toothpaste, it says something about um, danger, don't swallow enough, blah, blah, or call poison, poison control. Why are we freaking putting poison in our mouths every single day and every single night? You know, it makes you think, like, if you're brushing your teeth with poison, if you swallow enough and you could die, then why? You know, that's a lot of questions going on, and I really, I'm really, it, it just leaves me thinking. It should leave you thinking, too. Foam coating that's like on your teeth every time you eat, and it's like dangerous and bad and socially unacceptable. Turns out that this dangerous film on your teeth is a harmless residue from food consumption, and toothpaste doesn't remove it any better than eating an apple. So yes, you should totally brush your teeth, but not because there's this dangerous residue, and now I can't unfeel it. The, the psychological trigger is baked in, I can't not feel it, and I feel judged because I maybe have this dangerous coating. This same dynamic happens today with the $100 billion hair care industry. They push all sorts of scary ideas about dirty things lurking in your hair that only their product... Okay, stop right there, guys. Please do not judge me on this on what I'm about to say. You see all of these shampoo commercials that you're seeing? All right, no racist nothing. You see no African American person in any of these videos. So what does that tell you? These shampoos are not for you. They're not for me. So you better do your research and go get a shampoo that is for your hair, all right? Just wanna say that. Please don't judge me. Just wanna help you guys out fix and they get very rich because of it telling you that you have grease in your hair makes you feel dirty psychologically and what it does is it turns these naturally occurring lipids or fats in your hair which are totally protective and naturally occurring into this gross feeling dangerous thing and more and more these commercials have these like fancy 3d diagrams to make it feel totally legit and medical there are medical things here like dandruff is a real skin disorder that's something that has real symptoms and should be treated in a real medical way by a professional not by a commercial with a fake doctor showing you 3d diagrams to sell a product and no this lady is not a legit doctor she's an actor well we're on the point of dandruff and itchy scalps, let it be known that dry scalp, which is not a skin disorder, it literally means that you're, you don't have enough hydration in your scalp, is not dandruff. Okay, so if you don't have enough hydration in your scalp, I think that's when you should put, um, you know, conditioner or moisturize your hair. And I think that's where the other products comes in because your hair is not producing enough oil to moisturize your hair. So when you put all of that other stuff in your hair how do you wash that out because once it gets old and you keep adding moisture in your hair every other day or every other other day it gets old and how do you wash that out if you if you don't like if you can't use shampoo how would you wash all those products out that's my question and if we can answer that question in this video then i might be on the road to you know either healthier hair or just a confused road to somewhere i don't even know his head could be dandruff. And yet, they share effectively the same symptoms, itchy, flaky. But dry scalp, unlike dandruff, is caused in part by, wait for it, shampooing too much. Drying out... I only shampoo twice a week, sometimes once a week. And I apply products, okay? Like a lot. Oils, moisturizers, butters, I apply those. And sometimes when the oil drips down my forehead, y'all can see the y'all can see the results, right? This is why I wash my hair. Just so I can get rid of the oils so they won't drip down my forehead. Cause I have too much. Maybe instead of adding oils every other day or every other other day, maybe I should just do it twice a week. You know, after I wash my hair. And maybe four, four, five days later. Maybe that's how I should start doing it. I'm going to try that out and let you guys know how that turns out. And maybe I should start washing my hair once a week instead of twice a week. Okay. Continue. Scalp 
by stripping it of its natural hydrating oils. This was my problem in my 20s. I didn't have dandruff. I thought I had dandruff because I was shampooing my hair too much and it was drying out my scalp and making it dry and flaky. All of this gets conflated when corporations present their advertisements as legit science that's meant to help you feel better. But let's just quickly say it like it is. The only thing they're doing is trying to sell you a product to make sure that you feel like you need it as much as possible. Where this becomes totally below the belt, in my view, is when these commercials tell the story of how you will be socially ostracized if you don't use their product. Use head and shoulders every day. And this gets to the last point I want to make here, and potentially the biggest reason why I made this video. I don't care about you shampooing your hair. You probably should. I, you need to, to just determine that on your own. But let us just read. I feel like he talking to me right there because <laughs> I'm going through something right now in my head and I'm confused Nice that we are social animals. We live and die by what others think of us We strive to be accepted by the group at any cost and my big fear here is that we have given the power of what we need to do to be accepted to these big corporations, these giant machines who use this psychological dynamic to sell us more of their stuff. They have successfully turned hair into a discussion of hygiene and cleanliness. And now we talk about this almost as a form of epidemiology. Cleanliness and hygiene turns into an issue of health and safety, which let's be honest, brushing your teeth, or washing your hands, that, that stuff is there to stop us from spreading diseases. I haven't washed my hair in five years, and there's not some virus that's gonna pop off my head and go infect my family. <laughs> I wonder, like, if you don't wash your hair, does that mean you don't, um, you don't add moisturizers as well? Like, do you not add any oils, or do you just leave your natural oils, you know, to take care of all of that? I'm, I'm like, I just wanna know that. Oh, that's a very strange image. Head virus. There are real skin disorders having to do with the scalp. Those should be treated seriously. But my sense is that we've conflated that. We're not talking about health and disease prevention a lot of the time. We're talking about beauty and self-perception. That's not epidemiology. That's personal psychology, personal self-esteem, and societal standards. That feeling of being dirty or greasy, who determined that feeling? Who set the parameters for that feeling? It's not nature. It's not epidemiology. If you had been born 50 years ago, you wouldn't have that same feeling of being greasy. It's not natural. And even in 2021, if you were born in Spain, you would less likely have that feeling of just being dirty that drives you to consume more and more of these products, which helps you build the nearly $100 billion hair care industry, a huge portion of which is owned by just three companies, L'Oreal, Procter & Campbell, and Unilever, which find a million ways to feel like... And those products aren't worth for me, all right? If, if you have any, any coarse hair on your head, those products probably aren't for you neither, all right? So, <laughs> yeah, just want to put that out there. You are dirty, you are undesirable, and if you don't use their product, you will be ostracized from society. Just look at these commercials! What's wrong? Take off your hat! Oh, it's, it's dry. Dry head and shoulders, dry skull care. These companies are cracking. Once again, not for me or you if you have coarse and medium here. Oh, what drives us, and it's fear and a desire to be accepted. And this is just with hair. This is with a million of these products that tell us that we're inferior. And if I'm saying, I don't know, maybe even the soap isn't for us either. The soap, the body soaps, maybe that's not for us neither, I don't know. As a man in this society, it is a thousand times worse for women. So, am I here telling you not to shampoo your hair? No. Do whatever you want. You have a totally different hair experience than I do. I'm sure stopping cold turkey like I did probably isn't the right choice for you. All I'm asking you is to scrutinize your standards. And who is in control of the narrative of what clean even means. Okay. Okay, so guys, this video didn't really tell me, you know, the, uh, the stuff that I wanted to hear or that I wanted to know. But when it comes to moisturizing your hair after, you know, uh, washing out your hair with the shampoo and then stripping all your natural oils, all the old and dirt, dirty oils and stuff out of your hair, when you put that oil and stuff back in your hair, maybe the solution is just not to moisturize every single day. If you out there moisturizing every single day, adding butter, um, adding pomade every single day, maybe that's the problem. Just do it. Okay, say you wash your hair Monday, right? 
and you add deep conditioning and then after your hair dries with the, with the do-rag on, you take it off and you add your, your moisturizer, you add your butter, you add your pomade, you add your oil. I feel like that's too much. Maybe just your butter and your pomade is enough, okay? And then tomorrow, you wake up and maybe you add your oil, all right? You're just your regular coconut oil or your 2-6 King Wavy Hair Growth Oil. Because I, I say coconut oil because I actually like coconut oil, all right? Or, um, yeah, say you add that. Maybe not use your... Um, your butter or your pomade maybe until Thursday if you feel like your hair needs that shine maybe just use oil all right because it's not too heavy it's it's just light and you just put it put a little bit in your hair because a little goes a, a long way just add a little bit of oil brush that in and it's gonna add that shine that you want because your hair is probably already moisturized because of all the natural oils that's already in your hair and the oil that you or the products that you put in your hair on Monday maybe Thursday is when you should add more products and then next Monday you wash that product out with shampoo maybe that would help all right that's what I'm gonna start doing and then see how that works out for me I'm gonna do that for about a month maybe wash my hair every Monday or something or every Sunday I'm gonna pick a day of the week to just wash my hair that same day every day and I'm gonna moisturize um, butter I'm gonna add my two six King Wavy butters my pomade um, every Monday or so or every Monday and Thursday and see how that works out and then I'll see if there's any difference okay because right now I think I I add products in my hair every other day so if I add it today I'm skipping it tomorrow and I'm gonna add it the next day because I felt like I needed it like I felt like that's what I needed in order for my hair to be moisturized in order for my hair to look and feel healthy that's what I thought that I needed and which is the reason why all this happens in my uh, appears on my forehead because I use too much okay and yeah that video made me realize that and I'm pretty sure that that video helped out in ways that I can't you know even imagine it's gonna help me elevate to another level of research and knowledge and it's gonna help me give you guys that the educational you know thing that you need about ways or something and let's see what this leads but yeah, I want to give a big thanks to Johnny Harris for dropping that video and making me think twice about my weight journey and about what I think I know. And yeah, guys, of course, I'm going to have Johnny's original video linked in my description. Johnny, once again, if you watch this video, please don't copyright me, sir. Okay? I don't like copyrights. And if you do happen to copyright me, maybe I might have to take this video down. And then my subscribers are going to be lost. Okay? Because... This video was really important for them, so please, please do me a favor and do not copyright this video. Thank you, God, sir. But that is going to be it for this video, guys. I am sorry for a 30-minute video. It's probably more than 30 minutes, man. I'm sorry for that. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed, please make sure you leave a like, comment, and if you're new to my channel, don't forget to smash that subscribe button for your boy. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next cool video. It's your boy 360 Juice Namade. Peace.